21, um, which is a nice little milestone. Interesting beats you've picked for our intro music. It line. is hype right now. It is. Oh, man. I'm just feeling it right now. I mean, we've got to, we've got a hot guest. We got to have a hot track. Well, I that's that's totally correct. I am feeling it because tomorrow. Do you know what's happening, Ryan? Do you know what E League is? Can I just ask you if you know what it is? Yes, but can you please elaborate? I'll, I'll, I'll take the bait here. Go for it. Okay, so tomorrow we got the E League Clash for Cash. Clash for Cash. It's a great name. It's like a prize fighting name. It is. I would hope so. A run back of the E League major earlier this year uh, between Astralis and Virtus Pro. They were the grand finalists and. We're gonna do like a once-off big money match, uh, best of three, I believe. A clash for cash. Well, they're, they're, the two are clashing, and the winner will take cash, Ooh. and the loser will get nothing. Now, that's all well and good. We've got one of the personalities, one of the casters, who's going to be on Elite Clash for Cash, Moses O'Toole, with us. Ooh. Do you want to bring in Moses? Sure, we'll do. Right Let's away. Let's do it. Hello, Moses. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, there you go, loud and clear. Moses, so happy you could uh, you could join us. I think you're like literally on your way to the E League studios right now. Uh, yeah, uh, cool. Getting picked up in about fifteen twenty minutes, and then headed in. Yeah, for a day of rehearsals, get to see that beautiful studio again, see all the old faces, you know, all the good stuff. One hundred percent. Now, now, how are you feeling? Because watching the NA minor. I noticed you guys. You guys were looking a little, a little under the weather, a little tired. Uh, are you fresh? Are you ready for E League? <laughs> yeah, the the NA minor was intense, man. Um, it was it was funny. I mean, we were in we were in Romania doing the broadcast out of Romania, um, and all the players were out in LA. So we we're actually in Romania um, on California time. So our, our schedule was uh, you know get picked up at six p.m broadcast starts at 8 p.m. and then you know we, we go until potentially 7 a.m. Um, which was a which was a new sensation I thought I'd seen it all but that that had kind of uh you know that that did it for me that was a rough one yeah I I, I really felt for you guys I, I feel like Sadakis was delirious from lack of sleep um <laughs> at, at some points he was just spouting spouting nonsense now uh, yeah it's it's very weird it's very weird spending four days and not and not seeing more than like you know a combined 30 minutes of sunlight uh, just just because you go into the studio when it's still light out and then everything from there is just darkness oh god i can't i can't imagine that now now moses uh bringing it bringing it to uh bringing it to e-league one of the things that i think is really interesting about this particular event uh clash for cash is that it's, it's a one-off it's not the sort of three or four day or week-long tournament it's not a league it is one match two possibly three maps this is not something we often see in in Counter Strike or in esports. Yeah, um, I think it's I think it's super cool. Um, I've been saying it for a while. We've we've had some internal talks as, as commentators and as analysts and everything like that. Um, IEM did uh, did a StarCraft tournament a few years back in Toronto, where it was like a hundred thousand dollar prize pool, winner take all full bracket of all the players and i thought that was like the coolest thing ever it just made it so hype so um this is this is along those same lines right Two hundred fifty thousand for one match um all the intensity you could want you know like you just you lose and you like you just travel all this way for absolutely nothing uh which is crazy but but i love it i i hope it's not a one-off thing i think it would be great um to have something like this uh you know if Ely's gonna if this goes well and Ely does this more consistently um just to have like these cool cool show matches like this that, that are just, you know, all or nothing. And, you know, you just pick the two teams that are, you know, that have a great storyline that you can build a broadcast around. Uh, and then obviously Virtus Pro and Astralis fit that bill pretty much perfectly. Uh, Moses, I got to ask, the, the what we're seeing here is sort of the continuation of one of the interesting sort of recent rivalries in CSGO. And it feels like if you watch a tournament, you're often hoping that those rivalries happen, but there's no guarantee that they do uh, you, you know you're hoping that those teams will match up in the bracket because of whatever happens before that in the bracket but oftentimes it doesn't is there another rivalry that you'd love to see if, if e-league does decide to do this again in the future Ooh. um yeah i mean I, I, the great part about this year so far is that um astralis pretty much everyone hates astralis for some reason it's kind of what i've gathered 
Um, nice. <laughs> just even, you know, Virtus Pro and at first. And, you know, I, I, when I say hate, I mean, the players don't actually, like, hate each other. I mean, it, it just seems like a straw at the moment. You know, they played such good Counter-Strike to open this year up, and they still do, um, that, that it's just, I guess maybe it's frustrating, but, you know, they have the rivalry with Virtus Pro at the beginning of the year. Moving on from that, now they have it with FaZe, and that one's just kind of a natural progression, seeing as how Kerrigan, you know, former in-game leader, uh, Astralis probably wasn't, um, you know, you're never pleased, no matter how amicable it is about, you know, being the one removed from a team, especially when they go on to win the major right after that. Um, but, you know, Kerrigan going to phase for, and also kind of being there and game leader in Astralis, um, that, that, that causes some bad blood right off the bat. But they've had their own back and forth, you know, after, uh, I think it was after Sydney, uh, and moving on from there. And they've, they've had some great matches. So I think actually, I mean, um, I think Faze Astralis has given us some of the best best games in the past two three months or so. Um, so that would, I think that would be a really really cool one to bring in. That would be a sick matchup actually. Now speaking of the the high level of play from Astralis, Moses, I do have to ask you. I have to. Who is going to win and what is the map score? <laughs> uh, I don't. I, I don't. Honestly, don't even know what that's what's going to be. So I can't. I can't do the score. But I, I mean, listen. We're, we're just hoping it's. We just want it to be close, right? The, the tough part is, and, and this is, um, I think, pretty much every analyst in Counter Strike is is so sick of like pumping this narrative. But it's the only one that works um, with Virtus Pro. Is just you really you you can say it about pretty much every team, but Virtus Pro especially, you just don't know which one's going to show up. You know, yeah. um, any day of the week they can be the best team in the world. Any day of the week they can be the worst team. So um, I can give you the best analysis and best predictions, but it's all going to be predicated on if they show up, um, which which sucks to have to say that, but but it really does. I I personally would love. I don't know if they will, but I would love it if Virtus Pro won this um, this match, especially because. If you think of the big events we have coming up, if they were to kick something off with a win like this right now and head into, you know, um, ESL 1 Cologne and there's the major, like that would, that would just be fucking sick if this was, oh, excuse me, excuse the French, but, um, that would be, that would be absolutely awesome if, if, um, this was like marked their, their return to prominence, their return to like the plow comes back just in time for the next major. Hundred percent, and and don't worry about the French. By the way, we're you know we parlay vous français. We're, we're a bilingual <laughs> country, uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we uh, we appreciate Perfect. the French, and it's fucking exciting. Yeah. It's just <laughs> I I gotta say, like I'm like I Moses hit the nail on the head, and I'm always I'm always rooting for Virtus Pro if for no other reason than I'm 29 years old, guys. That's about a thousand in esports years. Virtus Pro, you know, a lot of their guys are up there, so it's nice yeah. to see that 18 year olds don't run the whole game, right? Yeah, right. They're, they're they're the champions for the uh, the older generation. Um, I think even even my brother, who doesn't even play video games anymore, whenever he tunes into Counter Strike, he he's always rooting for Virtus Pro just because um, they they're the guys from uh, our generation. You know, they they came up like right when my brother and I kind of stopped playing. So um, they're they're just yeah, and they're just likable guys. You know, I mean, uh, you know, outside of some some you know crazy twitter things that taz has to say once in a while um they're they're like the most fun characters like we have in counter-strike at the moment they are like the most animated you know if you ever go back and watch remember or rewatch their uh winning interview after dreamhack vegas like that was like the funniest like <laughs> three minutes of a broadcast i've seen in like years it was so good just having those guys uh just just goofing off and just pure joy of winning that winning that trophy um, so, so I think to a certain degree, because of the personalities, because you know Neo has a history as one of the best players of all time, uh, because Taz is is likable, um, because Tasha is extremely likable, um, <laughs> Snacks as well. I mean, you just get the feeling um, that, that everyone on some level wants them to win, especially because when they are playing well, they are by far the most exciting team to watch. Their brand of Counter Strike is just so much fun. Absolutely. Now, speaking of. Uh let's say old Counter-Strike war dogs. Uh, we got the news earlier this week that uh, Freiburg has actually uh, left NIP after I think 1,000 years of being on that. <laughs> I, I'm not sure about that number. You have to double check for me there. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah. Like, is this the move that's, that's finally gonna bring NIP back to what they were? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the best, I, I mean, I guess, okay, so no, it's, it's not. Um, I think that's going to be a time. That's going to be, that's going to take time. Um, I, I think it's a good first step and it's not a first step in the sense that it was like Freiburg being gone. Um, but it was very obvious for some time that that 
core four players just wasn't clicking, right? It just wasn't working. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's actually a little bit of a bummer because they had some upticks last year. Um, you think winning Malmo, winning Oakland and everything, um, where I feel like it kind of, those came at points where like it just kind of refreshed their belief that they could make it work. And I actually think in the long term that, that kind of hurt them. Um, but, but, you know, we have to see some kind of fundamental change in, in how they play and how they approach the game. Um, you know, and then you look at some of the underperformances of guys like Get Right, and, and you know, if he's going to be on this team, um, you know, he either needs to get back to being the star, putting up the numbers, putting up the impact, or he needs to find himself a new role where he's he's not the star player anymore, where he takes a more veteran status as, as using his like expertise and his experience, um, you know, in other roles in the team. So. They've got a lot of adjustments to work through, a lot of changes they're going to have to consider. Um, but, uh, you know, at least they're showing the actual willingness to, to get started down this path, right? Um, and, and it just remains to be seen what's coming next and if there's going to be anything more. That's right. That's right. Change is good. Change is needed, actually, is probably more an appropriate thing to say. Um, now, the other thing that's going on this weekend, uh, other than Clash for Cash, is the, the EU minor. And I don't believe yeah. you are part of the team for that, so there shouldn't be any journalistic compromising questions here. So I'm going to go ahead and just ask you, you know, any predictions for that? Who you think is going to come out on top? Oh, my God. That's... I I'm sorry. Look at who the hell's there, to be honest with you. <laughs> um... Let's see. I would say, um, I would say, obviously, Envy is going to be a pretty easy pick to make it through. I'm trying to see sure. who's in the other group because I can't see the first group A. Um, yeah, I mean, it, Envy is a, is a pretty easy one. That would be cool to see them go through. Um, this this ballistics team is, uh, is is someone that I'm keeping my eye on though. Uh, read a pretty cool interview with Golden earlier today on HLTV. But uh, but other than that. Um, there were the former Fanatic Academy team, so that would be kind of cool. Okay, so I got to hear. Um, big, I think I think out of Group A, we'll get Envy and Big, yeah. uh, which is a bit unfortunate because Ballistics is actually in that group. Um, but I think there's some upset potential. Big has looked really, really good in the matches I've seen them play you know, over at Mountain Dew League. Um, and then obviously in the relegation matches for Pro League, they, they qualified to get moved up in EPL. Uh, the other side of the bracket, um, I would like to see LDLC get back. I, I would like okay. to see Existence um at a major again i like i like him a lot that's more for sentimental value uh outside of group b i think penta will be the team to make it through there um and that's that's pretty much what dignitas i don't even know Dignitas's roster these days Rubino, Tensky, Jacob. yeah they, i mean they've got some skill but like they don't that team doesn't like interest me like in the long term right i don't mm. i don't see a ceiling there so i'd probably say penta and ldlc would, would be my two picks to want to make it out i don't, I don't think they necessarily will Okay, yeah, that, that those are those are pretty fair. I uh, I am also interested in this ballistics team. I think they took a, a game or a map off of Envy earlier today. I got the alert, but I wasn't able to actually go in and check it. Yeah, I think they they crushed them in the first map of the series. It was something pretty bad, uh, from if I if I'm recalling correctly. Um, but yeah. Now, one thing I wanted to um, ask you really quick before before we let you go, because I know that you've got plenty of uh, E-League stuff to prepare for, is you tweeted, I believe earlier this week, um, something about Valve not fixing a two-year-old bug, and I couldn't figure out what that was actually in reference to. Can you enlighten me? Um, yeah, that was one of the, uh, some of the, I mean, it wasn't interesting a specific bug from two years ago, to be honest with you. Um, it, it was more just saying the, the amount of times that we have bugs that, that need to be dealt with um, and, you know, mixed in with the deliriousness of being tweeted at 5.30 in the morning Romanian time. Um, but, but really, it was more, it, it's not necessarily about the bug, it was more the frustration, right, that, that there's, a, there's an update scheduled um, on a weekend where they have two of the Valve-supported miners going on. Uh, and I think the frustration came from the fact that, you know, it was 5 a.m. Um, and we were on the last series of the day uh, and an update was pushed through. And then one of the players dropped from the server um, and his game automatically updated. So the, the game actually got delayed um, for, for an extra hour longer than it needed to be while we were just all, you know, dying. Um, but, I mean, on a, on, a more, on a more basic level, it's just kind of like, 
why, like how how were the, how is that even a possibility? Like if, if if this is the minor, you know, this is the valve minor system, this is the valve major system. You, they'd have like a big fucking calendar somewhere in the office that says, <laughs> "Do not push updates on these days." We have our minors. Like the only, you know, every three months we support these these five or six events. Like do not do not update on these days. Um, and yeah, it just seems it just seemed a little bit crazy because I mean the implication, right? It's just kind of like either either they don't care enough to know the schedule, um, or you know they they don't they don't care enough to or they do know the schedule and they just don't give a shit. That sense, right? Like those those are the only two options that seem like a, that seem to me to be apparent, um, which is which is a little bit scary, which is always a bummer. Um, mm. You know, the, I, I've met the Valve guys, the majors. They're, they're good people, but sometimes those, those kinds of things are just so so confusing. And I, I know sometimes it seems easy to just be like, oh, yeah, you can just roll back the update. You know, it'll it'll all be fine. Like everyone can play on the older update. But you know, when you have you know a match server that also has you know the uh, the eBot or whatever whatever program they're using to um, you know keep track of the money so if there is a crash they can restore the game at a certain point then that has to be updated and when you're playing on the face it client you know using face it as a part of it, and the face it client has to be uh, updated so that they can play on it so then all of a sudden we've got like five programs that need to be updated and that's why where this hour-long delay comes in um, and th- those are the things as a production that, that they're just kind of frustrating to have to deal with I totally understand. I mean, putting on a tournament is difficult enough without that. And I don't remember the last time at a World Cup, you know, they stopped a game to change the size of the ball or something like that, (laughs) you know? They should have with the Super Bowl with Tom Brady. (laughs) Yeah, it was the the worst is like when you go to the update and you're like, all right, well, fair play. Maybe there's something useful in this update. And it was like an update for skins. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, it's, and it's just like why couldn't that have why couldn't that have waited until Monday or you know the three days prior to the minor beginning there were just three days of no Counter Strike being played anywhere in the world, uh, or, you know except for matchmaking or, or something but you know no tournaments going on so three days where they could have done it there, three days after after the tournament they could have done it there so I mean those I mean it's, a, it's it is a minor issue and I think it was. Um, one of those things that nine times out of ten I probably keep my mouth shut and don't stir the pot, but um, being exhausted at five a.m. and jet lagged and <laughs> uh, and everything just kind of culminated in a little bit of a itchy Twitter fingers. I I, I feel you, man. I feel you. I thought I thought it might have been about the whole uh, uh, putting out the Molly with the yeah. smoke thing. I that was kind of what I thought you might be talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's. That, that's the one I had in mind. I don't know if okay. it's actually two years old. You know, I don't. I don't know if it's actually like a two-year-old bug or anything like that. And I don't know if there even is a, a bug that hasn't been fixed in two years. But uh, yeah, in my head, I'm just like we, we've still we're still watching smokes just bounce through Molotovs. Seriously. Um, but we got we got an update in the middle of the tournament. So yeah, like I said, I was I was halfway to delirious. Oh, I feel you, man. No excuses needed. None at all. Um, before we let you go, Moses, is there anything that you wanted to say that we didn't get a chance to touch on or any shout outs you want to give? Uh, no, man, I'm all good. Um, just, uh, yeah, we got some cool Counter-Strike coming out. It's going to be a busy couple of months. I don't know if you guys are going to be at any of the events, but we got, you know, um, you know the, the minors and then, and then kicking off at the end of this month is what, the major qualifier, and then two days later, ESL 1 Cologne starts, and then following week is the is the Krakow major um, so burn out, burn uh, i hope you boys are ready to buckle in for a for a wild ride oh hell yeah dude i i'm, I'm gonna have no friends this summer it's just gonna be the summer of cs i think <laughs> yeah. yeah it's you and twenty thousand of your closest friends yeah. on switch uh, yeah, i'll go. see you in the chat guys all right moses with that um i want to thank you so much for making time with us uh for us on this busy day and uh, wish you all the best, and we'll see you live uh, on E-League Clash for Cash. Sounds good, guys. Thanks a bunch. Take care. Oh, so right. my busy. Whoa, 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 music. Whoa. Yo, you're trying to end the yeah, show real no, quick. No. The beats just, just came right up there. I, I just got so many questions about this, this Clash for Cash, man. I'm excited. So these guys played, uh, well, I, I guess notably two times this year. Oh, oh, no, they played uh, quite a few more times than that, but uh, what this sort of is is a run back of the E-League Major earlier, from earlier this yes, year. So they yeah, were yeah. in the grand finals, right? Yep. Now, they have played against each other several times since then. Now, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I'm... I, well, you're about to because oh, okay. at, at the Score Esports, we did up this awesome infographic. Oh, yeah, that is awesome. You see this? I, I think off the top of my head, I, I actually think VP have beat Astralis since the Major, between, between now and the Major. They have beat Astralis more 
at least on on LAN. Um, don't quote me on that one though. Well, Trust I, the it's, infographic. It's VP, so probably almost definitely not online, right? Because we know almost online VP. Definitely yeah. not online. That Polish latency is not not to be messed with. So so why just why do why should I care? Basically, we got a little bit from Moses, but as somebody right. who. Who I'm a big fan of like the E League majors, but but why do I care about this clash for cash? I I think Moses touched on some great yes. points there, which is that okay, a it's a rematch of an incredibly hype grand final between arguably the best Counter Strike team in the world, and as Moses alluded to, a team that you don't know what you're gonna get. They yeah. may show up. I mean, they got they got relegate. They're in the Mountain Dew League at this oh. point, okay? Because of their online play. But sometimes they show up to land and they're fucking beasts, yeah. right? And if we get those, we're gonna have a hell of a contest on our hands. And it's all or nothing, right? The loser gets nothing. This is not like, oh, well, there can't be a top eight, obviously, but this is not, you know, top eight, top 16, top two, whatever, get money. Winner takes all, loser uh, gets a flight home. Uh, you know, that's about it. To so, either Denmark or Poland. <laughs> wherever they may yeah, be from. Wherever that's, they may reside. That's right. And it's 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 more like a prize fight than anything that, that yeah. we've seen in esports lately. And, it, you know, it's, it's the McGregor... Mayweather. I know that was just, CS. That was announced last night. Legit, right? Yeah, it's legit, happening. Legit, it's happening. For legit. Real. Okay, yeah. so betting odds on that are obviously in favor of Mayweather. What? Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking at betting odds here now for this for oh, this class for, for cash. cash. I'm gonna cash go ahead betting. and guess Astralis are the favorites because obviously they won the major. Close, though, so. Right? Uh, kind of. I mean, Astralis is at 1.42 and Virtus Pro is at 2.64. I mean, I, I like that bet. I like that I, line. I would take the money. Now, can BP. you change that to American odds? Because I actually work in American odds. I'm a weirdo. I know. Um, that's Because that's European decimal odds. So what is, what is American, American odds? American odds is like plus a number instead of a decimal. So like it would be like plus 1,000, minus 600, oh, that kind I mean, of thing. I mean, can't you just do that in your own head? I mean, uh, no. That's what? math. <laughs> so no. I, so I don't my, bet on things. So minus I like 142, those plus 264. How about that? I mean, that sounds right in my head. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> no, that's not how that works. No, it's, it's definitely not. Why not? That's not um, how that works. Either way, guys, it's going to be really exciting. And you know what else is exciting? What? We're going to see some great Counter-Strike, and I don't have to put a bullet in my weekend's head for it. What? You know what I mean? It's three maps max. Yeah. That's exciting. That's cool. I just like, I just like that you get this match, and it's not the situation where you, you're in a tournament, and you're like, oh, I hope these two teams play. And then that just doesn't happen. Right. That's so annoying. Like, there's so many times you want to see, you want to see this happen. You want to see like, you want to see the new mouths play. You know, like phase or whatever. Like, you just want to see that. For example, yeah. right? Oh, that that is a good example. Yeah. yeah you absolutely. just want to see that. You don't you, you don't care necessarily about all their bracket opponents, but that you want to see what happens. You want to see Nico. You want right. to see the Nico. Right. Right. And and this is why I do think that that sort of boxing UFC prize fighting approach to esports, at least in CS, seems like a great idea. And I'm with Moses in that I, I, I would like to see more. And you had an awesome idea, Josh, which is like maybe, or at least you sort of alluded to one, where maybe E-League starts this thing where they're like, you know what, we're going to take the best rivalries and yeah. we're going to make make big money one-off matches about each so, one of them. So this happens in traditional sports anyways, right? Where, okay. where like, if you go to an NHL season opener, usually for the mm -hmm. big teams, they are playing their rivals. And I like that. I, yes. I think that's very cool. And I, they also do it at the end of the season. They put divisional rivals. I mean, yes. you know, it, yeah, it happens in all traditional sports. You want to you want to build that storyline. And I mean, we were even talking about I mean, League of Legends the other day with some people's frustrations in NA about trying to make the stories happen, trying to force the stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so is this a good thing? Is this this yeah. is what the fans want? Am I right? Well, I, uh, I I think it's a good thing, and you it's the problem is you can't do it in a tournament bracket, right? Because if you force the matchup in a tournament bracket, it's a really good matchup. Yeah. Then you're just screwing one team over, like you want yeah, it in the yeah. grand finals, but you can't make that happen. Like I that mean, has to could, happen yeah. on its own. You could right? You could hope that both these guys make yeah. it to the top, and that you rig it that they're in different groups, but. Yeah. Even and then, like, I, I'm not down for group rigging. Like, if you're gonna have a tournament, not. run a tournament. Right. I, right? I, I like, agree. I agree. But but maybe we don't always run a tournament. Maybe we do more of this. Before so. we sign off, I actually want to get the outcome predicted from oh. you guys. I want, I want, I want you guys to tell me who's going to win. I, this are we just doing cash? like the two one two zero? Or are we saying like how many, like sixteen fourteen per map? What are we doing here? Okay, well that's hard because as Moses pointed out, you know we don't know the maps yet. True. <clears throat> I am willing to say I think 
it's going to be Astralis 2-1. I, I think it's going to be 2 1. I think VP will take a map. First um, of all, why can't they just tell us the map if this is nothing? Well, there has to be a pick and ban phase, right? Okay, it's, yes, it's up yeah, to the yeah, team. Yeah. So. What? I, I think it'd be cool if they set the maps. I mean, we, we know. That would be so contentious, though, because obviously like, we know, you know, certain teams, oh, this is an insta win for them. They've won uh, seven out of seven times on, uh, yeah, on yeah. Overpass, and, you know, this team has won zero out of seven I'm times. Just, it, if it's a class for cash, this is a completely one off thing. I mean, you could set your own rules. This doesn't count for so shit. One of the things I think could be interesting is you do the pick ban yeah. ahead of time. So we See? know what maps will be on. And then we can fucking talk about and, it. And then also you could practice, like like you could see Vernus oh, Pro going to the wall on overpass because you and know that Astralis is good on it. It's They're probably, you know, if that's one of the remaining maps that it hasn't been banned, then you know, like, oh, we got to work on that. That might be interesting. I mean, but. you see it all the time in, in, in obviously stuff like UFC. Guys know that their ground game is shit and somebody's yeah. stand-up is good. So they, they they work on their weaknesses, and it, I think it helps improve the, the play overall because the thing is, okay, are we going to prepare for this certain map based on the fact that we know they're good at it? Well, we might not have to play it. We might it. just ban it, yeah. If you want to see the best of the best on display, why not? I mean, again, it's a clash for cash. It's a $250,000 prize if the fans if this is what they want some sort of like super meetup fight i mean tweak the rules like really give the fans what they want and 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 step the level of play up and perhaps if this is successful and they do it again Woo! they will do exactly that all right moses did you hear me can you get him back on the phone he's not that busy is he? oh I, 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 no he doesn't do anything he's it's not like he's uh flying jets here and there oh, everywhere no, casting not. every tournament um, but that was a pleasure speaking to Moses. It'll be fun to watch him on the broadcast. Like I say, hopefully he's a little more fresh than he was at uh, NA Minor. I felt really bad for all those guys. <laughs> That's the worst. Bitchy Twitter dude, fingers? Dude that looked like he hadn't bad. slept in like four weeks. I, I sympathize. I've done the Korea thing where I'm watching games yeah. on Korea time. And yeah. it's like you just flip your day over. So yeah. I was eating like McDonald's breakfast for dinner. <laughs> it was... It was not good. I, oh, all I day breakfast now, Eric. Oh, yeah. well, you well, the, you still get the, the good cactus. stuff during the breakfast window. So, you know. Sure. And with that, guys, I think we are wrapping this up. This has been the Score Esports Podcast. I didn't actually say this at the beginning, but my name is Colin McNeil. I'm with Josh Burry and Ryan Stratton. Oh, hi, Mom. We do this thing every week at wow. least once, sometimes twice, sometimes three or four times. Tune in. We're at twitch.tv slash Esports. We're live on it. We're live on Facebook. We upload the VOD to YouTube. Watch this space. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen. For Josh Burry and Ryan Stratton. Maybe not Ryan Stratton. Yeah. I am Colin McNeil <laughs> saying until next time on the Score Sports Podcast, GG. Good luck and have fun.